<clears throat> Hi, today I'm going to talk about how we're going to migrate or plan for the manufacturing use cases on the AWS. As we know that the key challenges of them is the security. Right? Usually the fabrication or production lines of the manufacturing environment is isolated from the external networks. So it's a job to make the CIO or CTO or CSO of the particular manufacturing company feel comfortable at least to move some of their workload, non-business critical workload to the cloud. And here is the guideline. Here gives you the overview of those achievable use cases for the manufacturing client or the environment. So over here, you're going to build the hybrid environment that consists of both the premise and also the cloud environment. So in terms of the on-prem, where you're going to have all those IoT and clients, for example, the cameras or PLC devices or robotics, right, in a modern manufacturing environment, it, you're going to like have the robotics that is connected via the Wi-Fi, at least IP networks, right? So with that, you're going to interface with uh, the AWS IoT Greengrass, which is the edge computing nodes, serve as a like, data aggregator and somehow to offload the processing to the edge. And on the cloud, they're going to do the IoT uh, device log analytics, right? Uh, the big data analytics, data processing, query, and etc. So everything is going to build around the AWS data lake. And here, this considered center of the universe, which is the AWS lake formation, is similar to cloud formation, allows you to build uh, the data lake solution very easily. And other than that, the AWS is going to insert another component uh, for the hybrid cloud client, which is the AWS Outpost, right? That consists of a few racks of the server and the switches that is natively integrated with the AWS regions. That with minimum configurations, you can get your own on-prem workloads connected to the AWS. And of course, you can use some data migration services like AWS Snowball or Snowball Edge and DB migration services to migrate some of your relational database to the cloud, for example, RDS, Aurora, and uh, you can leverage the cloud base, uh, the EC2 instances, the serverless to host some of the manufacturing applications, and you can leverage the cloud-based the desktop service, for example, Amazon AppStream 2.0 for your designer to work out some of the design document remotely and somehow you can ensure the security of it because they are not allowed to take away the copy out or those like design document which is highly confidential. So let's zoom in to uh, each of the use cases. Um, First, right. So, for example, for the IoT data streaming, right, in the hybrid cloud built environment, that you're going to like stream the logs from, for example, the cameras or TLC devices via the IP networks, and also as serving as a data aggregator, the IoT Greengrass is going to perform certain level of the data processing, cause it has to build in the computing uh, computing resources, and and also how uh, the Greengrass aggregator right communicate with uh, the AWS cloud so it's going to leverage on the AWS IoT core which serves as a data collector and going to communicate with IoT devices via the MQTT protocol which is uh, uh, perfect for the IoT use cases because it's really lightweight and they're going to use uh, the AWS the IoT setwise right, to perform a certain level of uh, data analytics for the IoT logs, IoT information and we're going to stream the logs right via the Kinesis Data Fire host with the ETL jobs done to the S3 bucket. Right, S3 bucket will be part of the AWS Data Lake solutions that is built by the AWS Data uh, Lake uh, Formation services. So over here is similar to cloud formation. Right, it allows you to define uh, and easily build a data lake solutions. And of course, we're going to like, proxy all the information, all the data that is from the application tier right, via the API gateway together with Lambda function to do some data transformation and end up in the AWS data lake. And of course, in terms of the application hosting, right, so you have a variety of choices as well. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the EC2 instances, you can use 
ECS, EKS, uh, those like microservices, and you can, uh, I mean, uh, use for example the serverless, and you can use the desktop service, you can use the managed file server services, and they are going to send the data uh, proxied by the API gateway and also the Lambda function to the data lake. And also, they're going to do the analytics of the IoT data as well. So this is how it works. I mean, the entire the data processing, query, and the visualization, and consumption flows over here. So you have the IoT endpoint that is sitting inside the factory. They're going to like aggregate all the IoT data via the IoT uh, green grass from AWS. They're going to send the data via the highly secure private link to the AWS. IoT call and also going to like, use the Lambda function, probably perform some of data transformation, uh, do some of taggings, right? And also they're going to stream to uh, the AWS data lake and also going to leverage the AI machine learning to do some forecasting or build some machine learning models. And also we're going to use the MapReduce uh, or the Redshift Hive right to do the data processing and going to use the ETL uh, of, or AWS glue right, to perform some ETL jobs and also they're going to curate the data via the Amazon Athena uh, and going to use the Amazon QuickSight uh, to visualize the data for the business user. And last but not least, the same set of the infrastructure that is built on the cloud uh, can be adapted to different use cases as well. So for example, you have a different set of uh, the IoT endpoint, they can still use the IoT call to communicate with it via the MQTT, and also you can leverage the event driven architecture together with the Lambda function, right? So whenever you see something, they're going to trigger the SNS, and then uh, the SNS will trigger the Lambda function to be activated, then get charged, right? And then they're going to store the data to the NoSQL. In the meanwhile, they're going to stream the logs via the Kinesis Data Firehose, perform the EDL jobs, and then uh, store it into the AWS data lake. So that concludes some of the achievable use cases in uh, the manufacturing environment. But bear in mind, the priority is always to convince the CSO 